good afternoon so this is soma from id kanpur so today i'm going to say, yeah hello ah yes sir yes sir kaun sa mood mein slides ho slides ho na uh-huh. okay 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 uh-huh. okay okay so today i'm going to deliver my lecture 3 uh, the from the organic chemistry some basic principle and techniques so whatever we have discussed in the previous lecture so today we will start from the fission of the uh, covalent bond so what is the covalent bond and how this covalent bond formation happens and what are the procedures are there what are the methodology as they are to what are the uh, uh, what are the procedures are there there are two types of uh, fission of the covalent bond so any kind of bond so let's say we have some kind of uh, bond here so let's say we have this kind of bond okay so here one one atom is here and the suppose a is the one atom and the b is the another atom so suppose we want to cleave this bond so this is let's say covalent bond covalent bond why it is covalent bond when the two atom let's say a and b is equally shared equally equally share the uh, when the uh, two atom equally share one one uh, lone or lone pair uh, lone pair of electron then it forms a single bond that is called as a covalent bond so covalent bond means so both atom have to share their lone electron to form a bond so now the, the here the main topic is the fission of covalent bond like how to cleave this covalent bond so there are two topics so there are two methods in in this way we can cleave the covalent bond so one is the heterolytic cleavage okay and the second one is the homolytic cleavage so i will go one by one uh, with uh, brief discussion on this one so first we will discuss about the heterolytic cleavage so from the definition itself you can you can imagine what is heterolytic cleavage heterolytic means different different right and homolytic mean the same way so heterolytic cleavage now if we see the uh, actually if we see the uh, the uh, definition of this one heterolytic cleavage what is heterolytic cleavage so after heterolysis so let's say we take an example of the ch3 br right ch3 br so one ch3 is there and one bromine atom is there so bromine also have the seven electron here electron pair and uh, now so seven electron six lone pair electron is here and one electron lone electron and ch3 one electron lone pair lone electron will share to form this kind of this kind of covalent bond now we want to break this kind of bond so if we see any kind this kind of formation is there so where one of them atom is containing the positive charge and the another atom is containing the negative charge then we can say this is a heterolytic cleavage so what is heterolytic cleavage so after cleavage after heterolysis of one covalent bond there will be one positive charge there will be one negative charge so one atom contain positive charge another atom contain negative charge so after hydrolysis one atom has a six state uh, electronic structure and a positive charge like this one ch3 so if you see ch3 has a six state electronic structure and positive charge and a positive charge you can also see here one positive charge is there and the other valence octet with octet so the other valence which is this one so other valence octet with at least one lone pair right so one lone pair is here and with negative charge see there is one uh, negative charge is also there so in this way so what is heterolytic cleavage so let's say we take an example of the ch3 br now we cleave this bond so where if the bromine is the most electronegative atom so we know that in the periodic table the halogen molecule is the more electronegative compared to the if you see the electronegativity of the carbon and bromine so bromine has the highest bromine has the not highest bromine has the more electronegative bromine is the more electronegative compared to carbon so that is why whenever one bond is breaking so obviously who is the more more powerful 
So if we see the more powerful, who is more powerful? So bromine is the more powerful because he is the most electron deficient species, electronically negative species compared to carbon. So that is why electronic environment, electronic density always, he this bromine will always takes the electron towards himself, towards himself. Okay. So then there will be a cleavage of this bond. So there will be how this bond actually forms. So actually this form, this bond actually forms in this way. So, so there will be, so first what it will form? So CH3 and DR, right? So suddenly they are not will be like fully positive charge and fully negative charge. So BR is there. So BR is more electronegative. So that is delta minus. Now CH3 is positive, electronically positive compared to bromine. So that is why it is a delta plus. Okay. So now, so you can see, so the electron density is going towards bromine. Electron density is going towards bromine. Now we can say there is a, there is a chance of this BR minus formation, right? There is a chance of the BR minus formation. So in this way, the bond will get cleaved and will generate the fully CH3 plus and BR minus. Now we are going to the another one is the example is the, the what is carbocation. So another, uh, the uh, interesting, interesting uh, part is the carbocation. So we'll come to this a interesting part that is a carbocation. So what is carbocation? This term is really interesting because whenever we go for the any chemical reactions, we have to always deal about this kind of carbocation moiety and the carboanion moiety. So, so whenever if you see any carbon containing positive charge, that means this carbon can be called as a carbocation, or or else also it can also name as named as a carbonium ion. Okay, so carbon at a possessing six state of electron and a positive charge is called a carbocation. So now CH3 positive. Why it is six state? Because one hydrogen, one hydrogen, and one hydrogen. So CH3 plus is the six state. That is why that is why the definition is saying the CH3 plus is the CH3 plus is the six state. Okay. So two is coming from here. Two is coming from here. Electronic count. You can count this one. So total six electron, right? Total six electron. So that is why it is called as a six state electron, six state of electrons, right? So that is why it is it is also known as the methyl carbonium ion. So you can also now you can you can see CH3 containing positive charge is there. Now you can say this is a CH3 methyl cation, methyl carbocation, or methyl carbonium ion. Okay. Now we'll go to the next part. So what is the now if we already install if we already come across with the carbocation moiety now we have to know what is the stability of the carbocation and what are the carbocation uh, stabilities object in organic chemistry if you see csc molecule so here the order the order is given in this way ch3 so it is the most stable carbocation so carbon containing three CH3 molecule. So carbon, so carbon containing three, three CH3 molecule. Okay. Carbon contains three CH3 molecule which positive charge. Okay. Now you can see this is also six step because six three bond is there and each bond pair only the two electrons. So that means six electron, right? So that is also sp2 hybridized. So you can also tell if a carbon contain six state electron and the uh, bearing one positive charge so you can also call it a sp2 hybridized right sp2 hybridized now carbocations have trigonal planar shape and compared to ch3 ch3 ch2 plus is the stable compared to ch3 plus and now ch3 hold to hold to uh, ch plus is the stable compared to the C ethyl cation now this is the more stable now we'll talk about why this is the more stable carbocation. So, so if you compare here CH3 and CH3 whole 3 3 plus. So let's say CH3. Okay. So now if you see, 
So this carbon contain three methyl group, but this carbon contain only three hydrogen atom. So now, if you see, so why it is now it is more stable because it contains three methyl group, and this carbon cation gets stabilized through this methyl hyperconjugation, hyperconjugation of this structure. So now, how this uh, this stability comes from? This is called plus I effect. So methyl has a electron. Electron donating group, methyls are electron donating group. So they are giving, they are pushing their electron to the carbon deficient. So you know that already carbon is six state. That means carbon has a second orbital. Now they need to get stabilized this molecule. They need actually more electron density. So who will provide the if surrounding atom will provide the more electron density towards them? Then the what happened? This carbon, this carbon atom get more stabilized. It's like a, they are they are now saturated atom. So that is why the whenever if you see any carbon atom contain electron donating group, so that will be more stable compared to the any normal group attached to this one or electron withdrawing group to the carbon atom. Now compared to hydrogen, methyl is more electron donating, and how it gets stabilized? Now here this is called the plus I effect. So what is plus I effect? I will discuss about the. Maybe another two slide after two slides. So this is called plus I effect due to this plus I effect. So due to this plus I effect. So here due to this plus I effect, it gets stabilized. Okay. Now this is carbon and this is methyl. Now suppose we have this CH two and one hydrogen is there. One positive charge is there. So now it gets stabilized in this way. positive charge. Now what you will generate? Will generate methyl, methyl, and double bond C. Methyl, methyl, double bond CH. Okay. Now in this way, this is called hyperconjugation. So this I cannot discuss uh, all these things. If we discuss here, then it will be much more uh, complicated here. So it's better we will go one by step by step. So 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 far we have discussed the carbocation stability. So the carbocation stability. Who has the more carbocation stability? This is the this tertiary butyl cation. This is the has the more carbocation stability, and this is the least stable. Okay. Now carbon sp two hydrogen and one is sigma bond. The actually this is called all this the single bond are called as sigma bond. So hydrogen is using his one s orbital, and here in the case of this one carbon hydrogen bond. Okay. So this bond hydrogen. Then is using one s orbital and carbon using sp two orbital. Now the remaining carbon orbital is perpendicular to the molecular plane. So now the remaining carbon orbital is perpendicular to the molecular plane and containing no electron. So like this is the one and here how the bond is forming here. So one lobe is coming from here and another lobe is coming from hydrogen. So in the same way. This is the orbital. Let's say my drawing is not good, but don't go to the drawing. But just imagine how this bond is forming. Okay, in this way, actually the bond formation happens, and this is the vacant orbital. This is the vacant orbital containing in the other containing no electron. So no electron is there. That is why this is a vacant orbital. This is the vacant orbital. Okay, so this is the vacant orbital. Now, now come going to the next next step here. Thing is the heterolytic cleavage can also give a species in which the carbon atom contains in which uh, can also give a species in which carbon gets the shared pair of shared pair of electron. So C S three is uh, getting if we if it is Z is like a Z uh, is the electron positive compared to the carbon atom. So let's say carbon is more electron negative compared to G, then it will be carbon the electron density will go to the Carbon atom. Okay, so here in the previous slide, what we have discussed in the previous slide, the Br was more electron density compared to C. So that is why the electron density going to the more more electron density going to the Br. So that is why C is three plus and Br minor. Now here, what we have seen, the C is three is the more electron density compared to the Z. So let's say Z any molecule where the C is three is the carbon is the more electron density compared to G. Then it will be acted as C is three. Okay, it will be acted as C three minus and G plus. Now the carbon atom actually, whatever the carbon atom, 
we are in negative charge on the carbon atom which is called as a carbonyl moiety now we have discussed carbocation moiety in the previous chapter in the previous slide now we are discussing about the carbon ion so what is carbon ion so carbon content other if the car if the carbon atom bearing negative charge then it is called as a carbon ion this is known as the carbon ion this you can call it a carbon ion car and ion okay now if the carbon content positive charge then it is called as a carbon containing the positive charge it is known as the carbocation carbo data okay now the organic reaction which proceeds heterolytic bond cleavage are ionic or heteropolar or just polar reaction okay so the organic reaction which proceeds the organic reaction which proceeds heterolytic bond cleavage are ionic or heteropolar or just polar reaction so this is called as a heteropolar reaction heterolytic bond cleavage because it is a happening in the heterolytic way so that is why it is known as the heterolytic bond cleavage are known as the ionic ionic or heteropolar or just polar reaction okay now we will come to the the second part of this fission how we can how, how we can uh, how we can the uh, cleave the uh, the covalent bond in homolysis movement of a single electron takes place instead of an electron pair now if you will take an example rx okay rx so what we have discussed in the um, previous uh, in the previous slide so here this bond one electron a the who is the more electron negative that is taking the more electron density towards itself so that is why the other atom which is uh, which is less electron negative it gets positive charge compared to the other atom so but in homolytic cleavage what happen single electron takes place movement of a single electron takes place when it comes to the single atom takes place then it is a half arrow this is called this is called full arrow this is called full arrow so this arrow we use for the heterolytic cleavage and but here this is the half arrow so this is half arrow we use we can use for only the homolytic cleavage why because in heterolytic cleavage one lone pair of electron is going to the more electronegative atom but in heterolytic cleavage only single atom single electron is taking place movement so that is why we are taking only the half arrow so in this way it will equally distributed to the both atom so then r dot and h dot that is called the alkyl free radical now allyl radical stability increases how so let's say we start from the ch3 methyl so we have seen in the case of the carbocation the ch3 where the carbon content three ch3 group it is the most electron most stable carbocation now if we see the radical carbo radical stability the then also the then also the the ch3 content carbon content three methyl group three alkyl group is the more stable car radical compared to the normal ch3 dot methyl so the reason will be same because the carbon content three methyl group and also it is giving due to the plus i effect or hyper conjugation effect so it is giving the more electron density towards the carbon vacan orbital so that is why now the vacan orbital is saturated through the electron so now it is known as the now it is more stable compared to the uh, compared to the simple methyl radical okay now it is more stable compared to the simple methyl radical now we, you understand already that how the carbocation and the uh, allyl radical uh, acts and uh, how the stability does uh, differ compared to when you are going from when you are going from the homolytic fission to to the heterolytic fission and uh, and the carbon carbocation and the carbocation so in the heterolytic cleavage what happen carbocation will generate and but in the homolytic cleavage what will generate radical will generate so organic reaction which proceeds by homolytic fission are called the are called free radical or non polar reaction or homopolar reaction okay so 
organic reaction which proceeds by homolytic fission are called free radical or non polar reactions or homopolar reactions okay so organic reaction which proceeds by the homolytic fission are called the free radical so these are all free radical we can also call it a radical ethyl radical isopropyl radical tart butyl radical ethyl radical methyl radical and this is a non polar reaction non polar reaction and homopolar reaction why non polar polar in the sense there will be some the distribution of charges but here is the no such distribution of charges electron density so that is why it is the non polar reaction and homopolar reaction okay now we will discuss about the uh, the nucleophile and the electrophile so what is nucleophile and what is electrophile so let's say a reagent that brings an electron pair is called the nucleophile so nuclear seeking reaction is called the nucleophile so we'll discuss one example one a reagent that brings an electron pair is called a nucleophile and the electrophile is the a reagent that takes away that takes away an electron pair is called the electrophile and the some example of nucleophile so let's say uh, some uh, carbon ion moiety nucleophile will we'll see some example that is a hydroxide and the cyanide these are all nucleophile and the neutral molecules such as water such as water r3n r2na etc also can act as a nucleophile due to the presence of lone pair of electrons so nucleophile not only that so this kind of uh, thought process we should not have the if the nucleophile so the atom can also only call the nucleophile if the if that uh, if the molecule contains negative charge that only we can say nucleophile no it's not like that even the neutral molecule can also act as a uh, act as a uh, nucleophile uh, neutral molecule also can act as a nucleophile like where the water so what is solvolysis here one uh, good uh, question is people always ask this is the solvolysis okay what is solvolysis so solvolysis mean so when solvent act as a when solvent act as a nucleophile when solvent act as a nucleophile when solvent act as a nucleophile that is called as a solvolysis and what is hydrolysis so when water act as a solvent as well as the nucleophile so what is hydrolysis okay this is called the hydrolysis okay so a reagent that takes away an electron pair is called the electrophile and the when water act as a nucleophile that is also called as a sol uh, hydrolysis okay so first we will see one example let's say we we'll, if we take the oh minus as a nucleophile so first we see the definition so in the definition itself it is saying what it is saying in the definition it is saying brings an electron pair is called the nucleophile and nuclear seeking reaction is called the nucleophilic okay so now it is nucleophile now we need a electrophile okay so let's say the carbon contain iodine molecule okay so now this carbon is the already ch3 ch3 is there okay so three hydrogen molecule is there now oh minus what we will do oh minus will go and attack there and i will go up i will go as a i minus okay so this is called nucleophile this is a, uh, this is the electrophile this is a nucleophile this is electrophile a region that takes that takes an electron pair that takes away an electron pair is called the electrophile so this is the electrophile why because carbon is electro positive delta plus and uh, iodine is the delta minus okay now the what will be the product so now this is the nucleophile this is attacking to the carbon and the iodine is going out so that means the what will be the product so oh and here it is a methanol methyl ch okay then it is a i minus then it is a i minus right then here electrophile a reagent that takes away an electron pair is called the electrophile and water and hydrolysis hydroxide and cyanide carbon ion and neutral molecule is the water ethyl uh, triethylamine r2na etc can act as a nucleophile okay 
Now, electrophile and nucleophile, one example I have given here. So, this is called as a nucleophile. So, this is called nucleophile. And this is called electrophile. Or this is called living group. Now, iodine is now good living group. Why? Iodine and uh, carbon. Carbon bond overlapping is not okay or good. Why? Because iodine is the more, much more bulkier compared to carbon. So that is why compared to fluorine bromine, iodine is the good living group. Good living group. Hydroxide, cyanide, carbon ion. Neutral molecules such as water, R3 and R2 etc. can act as a nucleophile. Okay. So this is the OH is the nucleophile, carbon is the electrophile and I is the good living group. Hmm. Okay. Now, we will we'll see the how the electron movement happens in the organic reaction. Okay, so how, how, sorry, one more thing here. So I want to discuss that is the, uh, let's say if we, if we take an example of the cyanide ion, if we take the another example of the cyanide ion, that is just Cn minus. Now, we have, let's say, now Cn minus will go and attack here. Why? This carbon is the electrophile. Okay, carbon is the electrophile and Cn minus is the nucleophile. Okay, so now, so what we'll do? So now here, if you take this arrow and if you see here is an Cn I minus. Okay. So now there is a new molecule form and I minus is the good living group. That is why we did. Now let's say we talk about the one example, then we can also uh, we can also um, like we can discuss about the how this this can act as a nucleophile. Okay, we'll take an example of the R2 Na. Let's say R equals to Me. Okay, I'll take the Me, Me2, Na, Me2 Na. Plus now lone pair of electron nitrogen has lone pair of electron. Why? So one bond is here, another two bond is here. So nitrogen lone pair is free now. So it can now go and attack here. We know that the lone pair can also act as a nucleophile right? due to the presence of lone pair. Okay, now this I minus has a good living group at living of tissue. So what product we get? So Me2, Me2N. CH3, okay, Me2 and CH3, and uh, now H2, now water can act as a, water can act as a nucleophile, how the water can act as a nucleophile, how the water can act as a nucleophile, water plus, so we'll take a different examples like water, how the act as a nucleophile, okay. So let's say CH3, 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 So here water can act as a nucleophile, okay. So water, as you can see, water is the neutral molecule, but still act as a nucleophile where it is going attack and Cl minus is, uh, it is going attack by O minus will go there and then again O minus will come back here and then Cl minus will come out. So what will get? Minus HCl. So one hydrogen is coming from water and one seal is coming from seal minus, so that is why the product at the product liberating as a HCl minus. Yes. Okay, so now what we will discuss? So now in the next uh, slide, what we will discuss the electron movement in the organic reaction. So, how the electron movement happens? So, from pi bond to the adjacent bond position. So, let's say we start from here. So, one CH2 group is here. Now, electron movement happens. So, from pi bond to adjacent bond position. So, now let's say this is going in this way, and now what will happen? So, here the pi bond will form, and one single bond will be there. Now, so now from pi bond to adjacent atom. So, from pi bond to adjacent atom, how it will go? So, from pi bond to adjacent atom is the, huh? so here, let's say. So this is the double bond. So now the whole bond will come to the air. Instead of this one in the previous case, double bond is going to the adjacent bond position. But here, 
double bond is coming directly to the atom. Okay, so adjacent atom from pi bond from pi bond to adjacent atom. Like adjacent atom contain the radical. Now the from atom to adjacent bond position. Now we have this moiety, right? Now it is let's say it is going in this way. So radical here and now this radical is going to the bond position. Now from atom to adjacent bond position it will form in this way, right? So this is the main mechanism that how the electron movement happens in organic reaction mechanism. Although I have this just in the previous slide how the electron movement is happening here. I have discussed all this uh, in some of the examples I have given. Although some of the example is much more in the higher level, like uh, maybe in this class it is not suitable for this one. But uh, this is the actually minimum uh, minimum example I can give. So below that, I we don't have this kind of example where we can explain what is electrophile, what is nucleophile. But it's good to know in this level that what. What kind of nucleophilic attack? What kind of electrophilic attack is happening in an organic reaction? Okay, and what are the nucleophiles are there? How we can identify the which is the nucleophile, which is the electrophile? So nucleophile always, if you see one atom, one molecule contain electron lone pair. <laughs> electron uh, lone pair is there. Electronically negative species is there. Then obviously it will be nucleophilic. And if you see anywhere electrophile, if a carbon center contain positively charged or positively charged or any good living group any electron withdrawing group is attached to the carbon atom so then you can say that it also acts as an electrophile okay now let's say so the electron movement also you can see so from double bond to pi bond how it is happening from double bond from double bond to pi bond how it is happening so double bond to pi bond like in this way from pi bond to adjacent bond position. If anywhere, if you see this kind of electron movement happens in organic chemistry. So these three kind of uh, uh, movement, you have to remember that what are the movement are there. Now, uh, now electron movement in organic reaction, now the lone pair also can go from adjacent atom to the adjacent bond position. Now, if you go to the, the what is the inductive effect? As I was saying that in, instead, uh, in the case of CS3, we'll take an example this one. Okay, so this is the uh, hyperconjugate inductive effect. When a covalent body form between atoms of different electronegativity, the electron density is more towards the electronegative atom of the atom. Such a shift of electron density result in a polar covalent mode. And bond, bond polarity, the bond polarity leads to the various electronic effect. Okay, so when a covalent bond is formed between atoms of different electronegativity, the electron density is more towards the more electronegative atom of the atom of the bond, and such a seat of electron density is result in a polar covalent bond. Bond bond polarity leads to the various electronic effect. Now the inductive effect is the one is the plus i inductive effect, one is the minus i inductive effect. So one is the plus i. So inactive effect also shortly named as a I and the one is the negative I. Okay. Positive effect and the negative effect. When a covalent bond is formed between atoms of different electronegativity. Okay. Now the positive plus I inductive effect and minus I inductive effect hmm. of electron density results in a polar covalent bond. Now, so if you see that this uh, carbocation and the radical, this is the carbocation. Okay. Radical, so that means so that means this is due to the plus i effect. So this is getting stabilized. This kind of carbocation or carbo uh, uh, radical, carbo radical. Okay. Now the if you see so there is a this is called the inductive effect. So this is called plus i inductive effect. So what is plus i inductive effect and what is minus i inductive effect? So who, what kind of group will show the plus i inductive effect? What kind of group will show the minus i inductive effect? So if you see anywhere. Electron withdrawing group and electron donating group. Electron withdrawing group and electron donating group. So, what are the electron donating group like CH3? CH3 is the CH3 isopropanol, like CH, CH3, CH3, 
and on CME three ME three CME three ME three. These are all electron donating group. And electron withdrawing group is what is electron donating? Electron withdrawing group like NO two, like CN, like CN NO two, and then uh, what is there? And then this kind of like a star CO two uh, CO two R. Hmm. This kind of molecule can act as an electron withdrawing group. Okay. And this is the electron donating group. Okay. Electron donating group, and this is the electron withdrawing group. So, so now you can see. So here, if you see the electron donating group, so this is the methyl group is there. So instead of methyl, if you if if you can uh, anyhow suppose carbocation is there, CH three plus is there, and one methyl group is there. So in the case of one methyl and one suppose any electron withdrawing, NO two. This is. For an example, this kind of moiety may not exist, but just for an example, I am giving this example. Okay, so now suppose I have taken this example and this example, methyl and methyl. So which one is now more stable? Obviously, this one. So this carbocation is now more stable. Okay, so this carbocation is now more stable. Why? So this carbocation is why more stable? Because you can see. So here both are same. Almost same. Only the here three methyl group is there. So three is the electron donating group is present. But here two electron donating and one electron withdrawing group is present here. So that is why this is the most stable carbocation because three methyl is pushing electron towards the carbon atom, and here two methyl is pushing their carbon uh, electron density towards the carbon atom, and one at one molecule is uh, taking electron towards itself. So that means uh, overall. So the electron density also going uh, going down compared to this molecule. So that is why whenever as I say that if the carbon molecule, if the carbon atom contains back end orbital and it only gets stabilized only then if there are sufficient amount of electron density coming from the other atom attached to the carbon molecule, carbon atom. Okay, now if if you see anywhere two methyl group is there, one NO two group is there, but there. Due to the presence of this electron pushing from methyl to the carbon, so there is a in case there is a electron density is going there, but at the same time, NO2 the electron density is coming from electron density also coming to that side also. Okay, so in this way it is like a uh, the this one is the more stable carbocation compared to this one. Okay, so this is the more stable carbocation and this is the more Uh, stable. Um, this is the most stable carbocation compared to this molecule. Okay, so we can can discuss other thing like hyper conjugation effect here. We have time now. So hyper. So what are the other uh, factor that decided the stability of the carbon uh, carbocation? So suppose we have the CH three. Okay. So, what is hyper conjugation? This is called a positive effect. Okay. So, CH two carbon has a three moiety, three hydrogen moiety, right? Now, suppose carbon is the positive charge here. Now, two other methyl group is there. I am not writing here, but three hydrogen molecule is here. Now, what I said, if the carbon has only six set type of uh, electronic configuration, it has, and it needs actually carbon needs total eight electron to uh, stabilize. Itself, so okay. So need again another two electron from any other source so that it can get stabilized. Now we have three methyl CH CH CH. So three CH bond is there. So if it is close, if it is break and it is give a two electron to here. So now what kind of uh, uh, molecule it will form? CH three CH three and double bond CH two and one H plus is there also. But due to this octet field. Due to this octet field, now you can count. Now carbon, this carbon is the octet. Now this carbon is octet because four is coming from this pi bond and another four is coming from here. Now it is a octet, right? Octet. Now octet field mean octet field mean what? This is octet field. That means it is more stable compared to the other. Compare compared to the other molecule, right? Compared to the Other molecule like your previous one, CH C plus. 
like in this way. So how many possibilities are there? So one C H three means three possibilities. So three C H three means uh, uh, this molecule has total nine possibility to get stabilize this. So nine alpha C H bond. This is called alpha. Means carbon is positive to uh, next to this carbon. If any group is attached, this is called alpha position. So alpha hydrogen. So it has total nine alpha hydrogen. So it has total nine alpha hydrogen in the case of this one. And the same way, it is also there. The radical case also same way. But the carbon ion stability, maybe we can discuss in the next class carbon ion stability. So today we have what we have discussed. So far we have discussed about the inductive effect, hyper conduction effect, uh, carbocation stability. Carbon ion stability and uh, yeah, the fission of the covalent bond. Fission of the covalent bond. The two way we can uh, uh, cleave the covalent bond. One is the homolytic cleavage. Another one is the heterolytic cleavage. So in heterolytic cleavage, what happens? Heterolytic cleavage, cleavage. There will be formation of the carbocation and carbo anion. And in the homolytic cleavage, there will be formation of the radical generation. Okay, so these are all the we'll conclude the today's lecture here only because too many things we have discussed today. So maybe in the next class we'll go some other uh, interesting subject and also we'll go deeply. So but step by step it's better to go step by step because whenever we go to the reaction mechanism there will be uh, too much uh, like. Uh, Little bit higher level compared to uh, this part, so that is why it's uh, it's good to know from here and uh, well understanding on this topic, so that uh, in future if anybody interested in the organic chemistry, they don't have any problem regarding this understanding of the organic. Okay, so thank you, and we'll uh, soon we'll meet you in the next class.